house this morning. Amen. We've come for the purpose of, of loving him, giving him the glory and the honor. Amen. Let's lift our hands this morning. Let's take a moment to touch the Lord. Felt the Holy Ghost already here this morning. Amen. Would you love him? Amen. As we lift our hands to the Lord today, God, we love you. Savior, we appreciate you. Hallelujah. God, you're so good to us. God, we're grateful today, God, that you've given us another day to love you, to worship you. You gave us the breath this morning, God, to breathe, God, to worship you, to love you. Hallelujah. Lord, we want you to move in this service. We realize that there's many needs today, God. We're believing you that you're going to touch. We believe you, Lord, that you're going to do a work today, God, that we're going to walk away knowing that surely you met with your people today, God. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you. Oh, it feels good already. Feel the Holy Ghost moving in the house today. Let's sing. Holy, Let's worship holy, him with holy, all of our hearts, mind, soul, and strength. Holy. holy there holy, is none holy, holy but him. Hallelujah. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Do you feel that way today? Worthy to receive glory. He's worthy. Worthy to He's worthy. Worthy to receive all our praise today. Oh, yes. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Oh, yes. He's worthy. He's worthy to receive glory. Well, he's worthy to receive honor. Worthy to receive all our praise today. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. glory worthy to receive honor worthy to receive all our praise today come on from your heart today church from your heart today praise I came today to praise him I come to lift him up today he is worthy Hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost moving in the house today. Hallelujah, exalt his name forever. Praise him. Oh, yes, from your heart. Praise him and lift him up. I come to praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah, exalt his name forever. Praise him. From your heart, Rising not just your table. lips today, from your heart, let it ring today. Rise I come to praise you today, God. I come to love you today. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty. Well, he's worthy to receive glory, I believe it. Worthy to receive honor. Worthy to receive all our praise today. Praise him. Oh, yes. Praise him and lift him up. That's why I came today. Praise him. Well, exalt his name forever. Praise him. I come to praise you today, God. You've done so much for me today, God. 
I owe it to you today, God, to praise you, to lift you up, God, to worship you. Exalt his name forever. Praise him. Oh, yes. Praise him and lift him. Hallelujah. Praise him. Exalt his name forever. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. Glory, worthy to receive honor, worthy to receive all our praise today. Oh, yes, holy, 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 the holy God, holy, 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 holy is the Lord. God Almighty is worthy to receive glory, worthy to receive honor, worthy to receive all our praise today. Hallelujah. Now, without the music playing, would you praise him from your heart today? Would you love him like you really mean it today? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost just moving in this place today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. And this is the day that I've come to give him glory. I've come to give him honor. I've come to give him praise. Hallelujah. Let's give God the glory. This is why I came. Give God the glory. You got to give God the glory. And He will give you, I believe it today. He will give you, and He will give you the victory. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The glory, oh, give God the glory. You got to give God the glory, and He will give you. I believe it today. I believe it today. Hallelujah! Give you the victory. Say it like you mean it this morning. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Oh, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Do you believe it today? Oh, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. So let us give God. 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 All of the praise Give God The glory We'll give God The glory Oh, give God The glory Oh, and He will give you I know And He will give I know He'll give you the victory Satan the blood of Jesus is against you Satan the blood of Jesus is against you Well Satan the blood of Jesus is against you So let us give God Oh yes So let us give I can't forgive God so let, let us give God all of the praise. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. 
Shame the blood of Jesus is against you. Well, shame the blood of Jesus is against you. So let us give the Oh yes. So let us so give let us give so, so let us give God all of the praise. Give God the glory. Oh, give God the glory. Oh, give God the glory. Oh, and He will give you, I believe. He'll give you, and he will give you the victory. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship, I adore you, God. Hallelujah! I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I worship, I adore you, God. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Sing. He's worthy of the glory. Yes, he is. Worthy of the honor. Worthy of the glory and the praise. Every knee shall bow before him. Let all the earth adore him. He's worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. Worthy of the glory and the praise. Every knee shall bow before him. Let all the earth. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Church, he's worthy this morning. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy of the glory. Worthy of the honor. Worthy of the glory and the praise. Every knee shall bow before him. Let all the earth adore him. He's worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. Oh, yes. He's worthy of the glory. Worthy of the honor. Worthy of the glory and the praise. Every knee shall bow before him. Let all the earth adore him. He's worthy, worthy, worthy hallelujah. to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's worthy of He's the worthy. glory. He's worthy. Worthy of yes. the honor. Yes. Worthy of the glory and the praise. Every knee shall bow before him. Let all the earth adore him. He's worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. One more time. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. Worthy of the glory and the praise. Every knee shall bow before him. Let all the earth adore him. He's worthy, worthy, oh, worthy. He's worthy, worthy, worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy, worthy, worthy. He's worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. Worthy of the glory and the praise. Every knee shall bow before him. Let all the earth adore him. He's worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, let's take a minute to love him. Hallelujah. Let's take a minute to just soak this in today. It feels so good in the house today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Oh, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Glory, 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 glory. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Not to give anything away in the next coming days. You know a little bit more later on what I'm talking about, but could not help but feel this morning for this verse. I believe it's so real today in our presence. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. Our world is filled with such chaos right now. It seems like most things are turned upside down. We don't understand what's going on or why it's going on. But this one thing I know, I've come in this morning to this house, and I have found rest for my soul. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. And I promise you this, before you walk out those doors this morning, that if you allow God, He will touch your heart. He will take care of your every need. Hallelujah. He said, I will give you rest. He did not say there's a chance, there's a possibility. I will give you rest. Don't you love him this morning? It's so refreshing to be able to be in the presence of the Lord. I know I say it so much, but I mean it from my heart. When I quote the scripture, what is man that thou art mindful of him? I'm glad God is mindful of you and I. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Enough of my crying and being up here this morning, being all sentimental, but I feel the Holy Ghost in the house this morning. Hallelujah. I love him so very much. I want to say a great big public thank you to all of those. Many of you posted things on Facebook. Some text me. I appreciate it. All of the kind words, everything that you said for our loss. I know it was a cousin, but in our family, our cousins are like brothers. And Kayla will attest to what I'm saying. But anyway, we want to say a great big thank you. We drove almost 5,500 miles. God kept his hand upon us, kept us safe, protected us. And then I'm on my way home. I got a phone call from my mom. We're going to request prayer in a few moments. And one of my cousins on the other side of the family, on my mom's side of the family, was almost in the same situation that Steve was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, her name is Pat. We're going to call Pat's name out in prayer this morning. She is in ICU. She's on the ventilator. So many times that seems like it's kind of the last straw uh, before the inevitable, inevitable happens. Uh, so I'm asking that you pray for our family on that side, that God would touch Pat and her mother. Uh, my aunt is 93 years old. She'll be 94 in uh, January. And she's already had to lay one daughter to rest uh, due to cancer. And she's told my mom a couple of times, she says, I, can't just, I just can't bear the thought of losing a second daughter. So I ask that you pray for her, my aunt, my cousin, that God will touch her. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is good to see everybody. God bless you for being faithful to the house of the Lord this morning. Looking forward to what God has in store for us today. It's such a privilege. It's such a privilege to be in God's house, to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, and be together with God's wonderful, wonderful people. Amen. Just in the way of announcements, Sister Laura wanted us to announce that they are going to be making peanut brittle again on noon uh, next Saturday, so please, if you can make yourself available, they would appreciate that so much. They do need workers, and of course, they need sellers also, and uh, please, just kind of let her know, say, Sister Laura, I'll be there, uh, so she won't be stressing out that there's not going to be enough help there. I know the feelings, sis. Amen. Let her know, and it, it helps her <laughs> to sleep better at night. I know the feeling. But anyway, if you have sold some of the peanut butter, be as quick as you can about getting the tur that money turned in. If you let it go, it seems like it goes on and on and on and on, and we have to keep coming back. So if you have sold it during the course of this week, get it turned into Sister Laura as quickly as possible so that it can be put to the right 
uh, place there. Also, uh, remember your tithes and offering. You guys have been so faithful. Church has been so faithful during this time, and you've made your uh, uh, commitments and so forth. You've been faithful uh, to the missions and all the departments. Just a great big thank you. God loves when you're faithful. I'm telling you, God loves a faithful Christian. So let's begin to uh, look forward to that and see what God has in store for us down the road. And uh, speaking of that, tonight, I guess a couple of weeks ago when we were gone, you had prayer on a Sunday night at 6 o'clock. We want to gather together tonight again at 6 o'clock for prayer. If you can make yourself available tonight, come back. Let's pray. The, we'll not be talking or having any uh, preliminaries. We're just going to come in and seek the the Lord for a little while and see what God will do for us. Amen. Do you love the Lord with all your heart this morning, mind, soul, and strength? God is so good to us. I'm so grateful for all that he has done. And more than that, I'm grateful for all that he's going to do. Amen. Let's stand this morning again. I ask that you would take my cousin Pat in prayer. She's about uh, 71, so she's in that category. Uh, she has some other health issues, which... Uh, kind of makes it even more difficult, so I ask that you touch Pat today, uh, that God would touch her, then also my aunt, and that he would be with her and bring comfort to her heart. Then also, uh, let's continue to pray for all the things that are going on. Uh, Pastor may say something about it later on. He didn't say it to me, but uh, we are facing a very, very critical week in, our, in the history of our country, and uh, we want to just pray that more than anything, God's will is going to be done. But let's pray. Let's ask God's blessing upon that, and he would touch our leaders. Would you pray? Let's take these needs to the Lord today. Would you pray? Savior, we love you. We thank you. We worship. We adore you, God. Thank you, Lord, that we have you to turn to in a time of need. Hallelujah. God, we're asking today that you would touch every heart, every life that's here. You see the need, God, of everyone that's here. Hallelujah. God, we know that you're able to touch. You're able to move, God. Hallelujah. I put my trust, I put my confidence in you, God. You alone, you alone are worthy to receive it. God, I'm asking today that you would touch Pat, God, that you would heal her. God, be there, God. Touch Tim, God. In Jesus' name, touch our country, God, the things that we're about to face, the things that we're going to go through, God. We're asking that you would be there. We need your help. We need you to guide us, to lead us, God. Move in this service today, God. Bless each and every soul. God, we worship. We want you to draw us closer to you today. Hallelujah. This is my prayer. More today than it's ever been before. Never let me go, God. i lay it all down again. Just to hear you say these words. To hear you say that I'm your friend. Oh, yes. You are my desire. No one else will do. There's nothing, nothing, Lord, that could ever take your place. Could take your place to feel the warmth of your embrace. I believe he's here to embrace his church today, to love you like you need to be Help loved today. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Bring me back to you. You're all that. You're all that I've ever needed. You're all I've ever needed. You're all I want. Help me know you are You're all That I've ever needed. You're all I've ever needed. 
your own I was. Help me know you are near. Hallelujah. Draw me close to you. Draw me close today, God. Never let me go. Never let me go. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I lay it all down again. Hallelujah. To hear you say that I'm your friend. You are my Nothing else could take your place. Oh, yes. To feel the warmth of your embrace. Help me find a way to bring me back to you. Your
Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Woo! The question's not whether God's here, God's here. Somebody needs to reach out. You need to extend yourself. You need to reach out and touch him right now because he's in this place. Woo! So reach out. And touch the the Lord as He passes passes by. You will find He's not too busy to hear your heart's heart's cry. He's passing by this moment. 
your needs to supply. So reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. Reach out and touch the Lord as He passes by. Your needs to supply. Come on, come on. Just reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. Reach out and touch the Lord as He passes by. moment your needs to supply so reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by you will find moment your needs to supply so reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by you will find Touch the Lord as He passes by. You, you will find He's not to be seen. To, to hear your heart's cry, oh, He's passing by this moment. Your needs to supply. Reach out. Touch the Lord as He passes by. You will find He's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He's passing by this moment. Your needs to supply. So reach out. the Lord as He passes by. You will find He's not to be seen to hear your heart's cry. He's passing by this moment your needs to supply. Reach out
Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. Such a beautiful touch of the Lord in this room today. So grateful for it. I can't make it without him. Scripture says we live, we move, we have our being in Him. And uh, people think they can survive without Him. It's only because they don't have life in Him. If you have life in Him, you can't make it without Him. He's just, He's my everything. He's my everything. God bless you. You may be seated for a while. I know you've been standing. Amen, amen. God is so good. So good. Thank you, Jesus. I'm almost so total Mokomasha. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being with us on this Sunday morning. I do want you to spend some time. We'll pray more specifically about this tonight. But do pray for our nation. Pray for what's going on. Pray for the elections. Pray for peace. Pray for the peace of Israel. Scripture tells us to. And so let's, let's remember to do that. And um, just ask God to be with us. Uh, I won't give you candidates. I don't even do that within our own district to my good help. I don't tell him who to vote for district-wide, do I? Sectionally, I don't, I don't, I let him make up his own mind. But I will tell you to vote life, vote righteousness, vote for Israel. Just uh, make sure you vote things that are consistent with the Word of God and uh, do those things. Vote for an idea, not for a person. Well, God's good. I uh, hope you're rested well. The only problem that I foresee at the moment with this hour change, because it made sure everybody was here on time, that was a great thing. We had, we had a little extra sleep today, and that's a great thing. The only problem is, is my biological clock says I should be eating about now. And uh, so, got a little difficulty with that, but outside of that. I'm gonna take you to 1 John chapter four, and if you'll stand for just a moment, we'll do this and then I'll let you sit back down again. I'm only going to read a verse, one verse, and uh, it won't be lengthy. But 1 John chapter 4, and I want to read verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Believe not every spirit, try the spirits. Because there are some false voices out there that are vying for your attention. And uh, I'm gonna preach off my cell phone today. You've got mail. And unfortunately, it doesn't have the rest of it up there, but. The fact of the matter is, most of it's junk mail. When I clear off my inbox, most of the time, it's nothing but junk. Try the spirits. Jesus, give us your help today. Let me preach to you, to these people, what, what I feel led of the Holy Ghost to do. I give you praise and honor and glory for doing it, God. 
Let me be a vessel, that's all I ask for. In your name, amen. God bless you and you may be seated. I like to be a win-win individual. I like to find the positive side of things. Uh, so I'm gonna start off with something positive this morning. One good thing that has come off of, out of COVID-19 is the vast array of preaching that you can get on the internet. Um, if you really want preaching, you can have service all Sunday long. I'm telling you, there's some good stuff. I've shared it with some of you, uh, put out there some preachers that I enjoy. Uh, uh, Jimmy Tony, I told Jimmy Tony down in Gainesville, Florida the other day, I said, Jimmy Tony, I ought to start paying you tithes as much as I listen to you preach. But uh, some excellent, good, godly men that, are, that, that you can tag into and listen to. And uh, if, I don't, if I don't fill your wagon, then you can get it somewhere else. But one bad thing that has come out of COVID-19 is the vast array of preaching that you can find on the internet. Because not everything out there has got the right voice. There's a bunch of prophets out there, and I think they spell it P-R-O-F-I-T-S. There's prophets by the dozen out there, each one of them with their own vision, their own prophetic word. They know how everything's going to happen. I'm afraid that if they would go back to the Old Testament test of a prophet, they wouldn't be living very long. Because the Old Testament test of a prophet was if they prophesied and they don't tell the truth, you don't listen to them, you get rid of them. Because if, if you're gonna say, thus saith the Lord, you better make sure that God says, hello. But there's people out there, uh, and, and I'll be honest, some of you have brought up different situations, different names to me, and I'm like, oh no, please don't listen to that junk. Don't even go there, because it's not, it's not truth. And uh, there's a lot of stuff out there that is vying for your attention. And so I, I boldly bring you 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1, believe not every spirit. Now one of the good things about the church and the fellowship of, of the believers is the fact that the scripture says, know them that labor among you. And so you need to make sure that they are a part of the fellowship of the children of God and not just some sweet voice out there. It doesn't matter how good they sing. A lot of singers decide they're preachers. That they, they should stay away from preaching and stay to singing. There's one that I've got in my mind right now that uh, I enjoy is singing. I really do. I, I enjoy black style, and this man happens to be a black man, pastor in black church. But I'll be honest with you. He teaches a doctrine that is of inclusiveness that everybody is going to be saved. And he even goes so far as to say Lucifer himself is going to be saved. I had news for you, friend. There's a lot of junk out there. You try to appease everybody. You try to please everybody. You try to do all of that. And the fact of the matter is, you're not doing anything but getting yourself in trouble with Almighty God. I don't care how large your church is. I don't care what people do and all that kind of stuff. The fact is, you better be able to say what God wants you to say. Now, to the book of, of Ephesus, in the book of Revelations, uh, as, as the Lord is speaking to this particular church, he says in Revelations 2 and 2, I know thy works. I'm glad he knows what we do. And I, thy labor, thy patience, and how thou cannot, cannot bear those which are evil. 
And it's, the scripture says, Thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. Personally, if somebody goes by the name apostle so-and-so, I'm pretty leery of that stuff, okay? Uh, if you're truly an apostle, you don't have to tell anybody. Your works will speak for you. But, uh, but anyway, uh, the, one of the things that God complimented Ephesus on was the fact that they had tried them and he said he found that they were liars. Now that does not mean that we need to be so exclusive that when we try the spirits, if they are of a right spirit, we don't just throw everybody out. John wrote to, uh, uh, to the church in one of his little tiny epistles, Second John, Third John, when he wrote to the lady and he told her, you, you, you're allowing too many people in here. You don't, you don't say Godspeed to everything that's out there. You don't bless everything that's out there. Wrote to the men and he talked about diatrophies and how that he loved the preeminence. And because he wanted to be the big man on the block, he wouldn't let anybody that, that John sent his way to, to be respected by that church. So he had to get on to diatrophies for keeping the door too shut. There's balance in the kingdom of God. But one of the beautiful things about being an apostolic, one of the marvelous things about being a Pentecostal is we do have the gifts of the Spirit at our disposal. And I'm thankful for that because, and I've mentioned it, I mentioned it over and over because I want you to know it. One of the gifts of the Spirit that uh, is applicable to what I'm talking about is the discerning of spirits. You don't have to discern whether somebody has a spirit of gluttony. You can look at their works and tell that. All right? There's three things. Don't, don't go out there trying to find spirits hidden behind everything. There's three things that it divides into. Number one, is it a, is it a demonic spirit? Is it a spirit from hell? Because there are spirits that affect regions and do things. And it is very important that you get to learn things like that. Now let me, let me tell you, you're not so important that the devil, the Satan, uh, takes his time out to bug you all the time. The devil didn't cause you to have a flat tire. The fact that you ran it too long and ran off the side of the road where the, where the nails are is the reason you had a flat tire. Come on. Don't go blaming him for everything. Y'all heard about the devil weeping and crying one day. Someone stopped and asked him what was wrong. He said, those Pentecostals are blaming me for everything. All right. But there is demonic spirits. And I, I would venture off. Can I just preach today? Can I just, can I just take my time. I, I, would, I would dare say that there are more spirits among us that we are pacifying rather than casting out like they deserve to be cast out. And uh, so we need discerning with spirits to know those things. Second thing is, is whether it's flesh or not. Because a lot of things that happen is not the devil, but it's your stinking flesh. Now let me give you a little balance here because a devil cannot stand against the name of Jesus. He's got to flee. He cannot take it. He, he will have to leave. But your flesh, we can't cast out your flesh. You talk about a Halloween scare. We cast out your flesh, all we're left is your skeleton. No, thank you. I'm not because your flesh has got to be crucified. That's why we fast. That's why we discipline ourselves is because flesh has to be crucified. You don't crucify a spirit. You don't crucify the devil. You, that, that thing's not gonna, it, you cast out a devil, you crucify the flesh. 
But there's one other thing, and you better be aware, because sometimes it's not the devil, sometimes it's not your flesh, sometimes it is God, and don't ever be guilty of fighting against God. Gamaliel gave him that advice when he said, if this is of God, it, you, you can't do anything against it. I don't want to be found fighting against God, because if God's in it, I want to be on God's side. Somebody shout amen. amen. And so when things come up, the, one of the key things is we need to learn not to be hasty to answer some things. Brother O'Brien and I were talking last night, pulling into the church, uh, and, and we were talking about something. And I told him, I said, you don't need to answer me right now. And Brother O'Brien, this was what was on my mind at that very moment was what I've already got in my notes because sometimes we need to know if God is in it. So what, would it, what are we gonna do about it? We're gonna take time to make everything a matter of prayer. Anybody in the house believe in prayer? We wanna know God, are you behind this? Are you with me in this? Because if you are, I want to be on what you're doing. And it doesn't mean that it's always a win for you. Doesn't mean it's always a positive for you. It will be in the end. But remember, opportunities wear work clothes. Oh, I feel like preaching in this house tonight, today. Sometimes the thing that God wants you to do may be difficult and unpleasant, but when God's in it, I'll promise you the benefit at the end of it is going to be worth all of it. And so you want to you want to be willing to say yes to whatever God wants, but you need to be able to say no to whatever the devil wants. And a lot of times the devil is the one that's out there holding the hook with a bait on it making it look good. So you need the discerning of the Holy Ghost. You need to stay full of the Holy Ghost, child of God. And I'm gonna tell you, we, we, we're missing way too much church together. We're missing way too much. Can I just, can I pastor for a second? There's too many of you, we're doing everything we can to get church to you, but some of you are not even taking advantage of that because some of you are not even plugging in on Wednesday nights to hear what we've been teaching. Hello. And so when you don't get enough of the word of God in you, your faith starts waning, your strength starts waning, your prayer life starts waning, and you start listening to the wrong voices. I feel an unction of the Holy Ghost to do what I'm gonna do today, and you need to be able to tag in and listen to the right voices in your life. Proverbs 14 and 15 says, the simple believe every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. I don't want to be so, so gullible that whatever comes to me, I just take it at face value. And I don't want to be so suspicious that I, I want to be cautious, but I don't want to be to the point that my cautiousness has stopped everything. Years ago, and I'm preaching right now, okay? Years ago, the gifts of the Spirit went through a, a, a difficult spot that was referred to as the latter rain movement. It happened in the 40s, early 50s, where this, this uh, early precursor of the charismatic movement moved through the, the Pentecostal uh, churches, and, and they started this. Now, what they got to doing with the gifts of the Spirit was they got to see, and just like the, the discerning of spirits, they got to see, and you know, you've got the spirit of jealousy, you got the spirit of lust, you got the spirit of envy, you got the spirit, and they, they, they started doing all that kind of stuff, which is a misuse of the discerning of the spirits, because the proper use is just finding out which category it is, all right? Then they, then they got to doing other things. They got to using tongues and interpretation to instruct other church members what they were supposed to do. I wonder how upset God got if, when, if they used a thus saith the Lord to try to straighten out somebody they, they were mad at. Okay? It got so abusive that, that some of them you even got to the place that the Holy Ghost supposedly 
I got to put that in there. Supposedly showed him you're married to the wrong person. You need to divorce that one and marry that one because that one over there is your real soulmate. Elmo's back there getting his arms around Cindy like, "Uh uh-uh, nobody taking you, babe. I love that, Elmo. I like it. I just like, you my woman, nobody going to get. I'm telling you that. That kind, of, that kind of junk has no place in the kingdom of God. A- am I right? All right. So this is what people did. They began to teach on the use of the spirit, and the abuses of the spirit. And what somebody described it was, was they built a great big concrete viaduct for the spirit to flow through. And then they cranked down the gate where they only let a trickle go through. If you're going to have teaching that sets the absolute boundaries, don't shut down the flow. Open the flow up and let it go through. Okay? You need to let the Holy Ghost do what it's supposed to do. And, uh, and so... So my advice to you is don't close it down. I want an absolute move of the Holy Ghost. I don't want, and I'm just, I'm not, maybe I am where the Holy Ghost wants me today. But you listen to me. I hunger for more gifts of the Spirit operating within our church. I hunger for tongues and interpretation of prophecy. I hunger for somebody to have such a bold word of faith that miracles take place. Somebody give me an amen now. I'm telling you, we've got to have the Holy Ghost. We are dependent upon the Spirit of God. We got to have it. We got to have God talking to all of us. I don't want to be gullible. I want to be in touch with what God is doing. Now, I'm taking you back into the Old Testament, into the book of Kings for this next story. I brought it up to you before. But it, to me, is one of the more perplexing stories in the, the Scripture. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 13 begins to tell of this. It's the period of time of the division of the kingdom. Rehoboam has ended up with the two tribes of Benjamin and Judah. Uh, Jeroboam has got the ten tribes. Rehoboam, by this time, has got back where he ought to be with God. He's gotten right with God. Jeroboam has his successes go into his head. And rather than allowing unity to take place in the kingdom of God, Jeroboam sets up two places of worship, Dan and, and, uh, and, and Bethel. And he has set up in those places uh, calves, for them to worship. Then, and he has created an altar uh, before these calves where they have burnt sacrifices to these particular calves. And, uh, and so there's a story connected to that that really bothers me. And it, I don't think it's wrong to be bothered by some of those things. It's just there's things God I don't understand. May not understand it until I get to heaven. But David was upset when when Uzzah touched the uh, Ark of the Covenant and God killed him. And and so he had to leave it alone until he got an understanding of some things. So so here it is. 1 Kings chapter 13 verse 1 kind of gives us the clue of what is going on. Behold, there came a man of God. Somebody say a man of God. Out of Judah. Now these are the two smaller tribes. By the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Now, this man of God has got a message from the Lord. He's telling Jeroboam, because you have set up this idolatrous worship, there is, there is going to come a king that is going to sit on the throne. He's going to be of the seed of David, which Jeroboam was not. Rehoboam was. So it was going to come out of the lineage of Rehoboam. He said there's a king coming by the name of Josiah. And Josiah is going to destroy this heathen worship. It's going to happen. And, uh, and to show you as a sign that this is going to happen. This altar that Jeroboam was burning incense on. 
is going to be rent. It's going to be torn apart. And it is, is that why they call it renting houses? Anyway, it's going to be torn apart. And the ashes of this altar is going to be thrown onto the ground. Jeroboam, because he's the author of this false religion, Jeroboam gets mad. He is like livid that somebody would dare question his authority on this. And the Bible said that he reached out his arm to, to get a hold of this man of God. And when he reached out his arm, the Bible said his arm dried up. I don't know what that looked like, but I can tell you, it seized up, quit moving. It lost its fleshliness uh, and it just dried up and he couldn't move it anymore. And in his aggravation of all of that, he hit that altar and it fell to the ground and it broke apart. And the word of the Lord spoken by that unnamed prophet instantly came to pass and the sign was there. Undeniable, we know his prophetic work concerning Josiah came to pass. It happened, but happened many, many years after Jeroboam was already dead. But here's the problem that I have with this story. This unnamed prophet is turning back to go home. He is leaving a successful ministry, a successful word from the Lord until he has met a backslidden prophet who lies to him and tells him, I've spoken to the Lord, and the Lord said, it's okay for you to come to my house. That's not what the Lord told the prophet. The Lord told the prophet, don't turn to the right, don't turn to the left. You go there, you deliver your message, you turn around, and you leave there, and you go back home again. But this backslid prophet, how do you know he was backslid? Look at the key ses, uh, words that are used in, in, uh, in verse 11. Chapter 13, verse 11. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel. And his sons came and told him all the words that the man of God said. How do you know he's backslid? Because he's living in Bethel. Bethel, a city with such a rich heritage, a city with such a beautiful religious significance. Abraham sacrificed there. And, uh, and later on, Jacob, when he's fleeing from his brother, comes to the place there at Bethel. And he lays down and he makes a rock, the pillow, and the Lord visits him. And he sees the, the angelic host going into heaven upon that heavenly ladder. And he makes a promise to God there that if God would bless him, he'd pay tithes and all of the rest of that. And it, he sets up that pillar and he anoints that pillar and he says surely God was in this place and I knew it not and he named the place Bethel which literally meant the house of God there was a time that the ark of the covenant came to Bethel and resided in Bethel when Samuel was taking care of the ministry of the kingdom and uh, the duties and responsibilities before Saul became the king, he made his abode in, in Bethel at times uh, so that he could govern from that place. But it was at that place uh, that Jeroboam decided this place of such significance, uh, this place of such rich history, he put up his golden calf and usurped it. Now, I'm going to tell you something, friend. If I or anybody else takes this pulpit and preaches false doctrine that takes you away from truth, don't sit under them. Do you hear what I'm telling you? 
Well, it's always been my church. I've lived there a long time. Not if they're not telling you the truth. Not if they're preaching to you something besides what was once delivered to the saints. If they've changed it, I'm telling you what goes first is the holiness. And after the holiness, the message of the oneness of God follows after it. I'm telling you, if that ever happens, don't you hang around. Now, I'm saying that. Because I made up my mind a long time ago, what daddy handed me, I was going to hand down to my kids. And I paid a price for some of the things that I've said. And I paid a price for the decisions that I made for holiness. But I'm telling you, I'm not going to change now. It's like Polycarp, 80 and four years have I served him and he has never failed me. Well, I'm not 84, but I'm 62 as of today and he has never failed me and I'm not going to fail him now. I'm making my declaration. I will continue to preach the unadulterated word of God. This man knew what it was like to have been touched by God, to be moved of God. But he had compromised and allowed this false doctrine to become the norm for him and where he lived. And so there he, in that city of compromise, in that place, where he had turned himself. What he did was this. It bothers me to tell this story because that man got a hold of that other man. He knew the right words. He knew the right tone of voice. He knew how to say it because he had done it before. And he told that young man, no, I've talked to God too. And God said, it's okay for you to come to visit because I'm a man of God, you're a man of God. Everything's going to be all right. You just come to my house and refresh yourself. And this young prophet accepted the words of what should have been an elder that should have led him right. I want you to know I don't care how much affection in us is in it. I don't care anything else. If it deviates from this Acts 2.38 message, you better be wary of it. They might understand some things about marriage and they might understand some things about that. But I'm going to tell you that even when I go to a commentary and I look at the commentaries, I've got to understand these people didn't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost or they didn't have the revelation of the oneness of God. And there's a lot of bones I've got to throw out and junk that they don't understand. But friend, I'm telling you, this apostolic message is worth holding on to. I'm telling Telling you that your walk with God is too dear to give it up to somebody that is trying to whisper in your ear and get you off in a false direction. And because he was deceived when he left that prophet's house, a lion came out and killed him and destroyed him. And then the old man grieved that the young prophet didn't listen to God. I remember a man I used to pastor. I remember one thing, he'd gotten out of church for a while and got back in church. And he would stand up and testify of how that the elder, Brother Murray, would come to his house and talk to him and tell him, Robert, you know too much to be lost. And I'm preaching and I'm saying today that once you have been introduced to this apostolic truth, you've got too much at stake to go listening to some voice but, 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 but the but preacher made me mad. I don't care how mad I make you. 
Jesus insulted the woman when she, when she wanted a miracle, and she still said, yeah, but the dogs eat the crumbs off the floor, off the table, that fall off the table. It, it, you've got to look beyond some things. You've got to look beyond just what may be out there. You, 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 but Samuel, Samuel, you misunderstood. You misread me. I'm not drunk. I'm not one of those loose women out there. you just got to forgive Samuel. He's had a tough day dealing with Eli and, and uh, Hophni and Phinehas, rather, uh, He's had a hard, hard day dealing with his backslid sons. Uh, and just be merciful to him a little bit. Because if you have a right spirit, he's still able to prophesy the blessings of God. You know, I rarely ever do this. But, <laughs> Did, did anybody catch that the other day? It was kind of funny. It was at least between me and Brother O'Brien, it was funny because I willfully that particular day brought my cell phone to the platform, to the pulpit, and I set it down here. And, and Brother O'Brien's walking away, and he's, you know, because Brother Bodie never takes his cell phone to the pulpit, he turns around to get his phone. He, he, he realized he didn't have the same little dot in the back, and it was, oops. He's like, get it back there, get it back there as soon as I can. Well, I brought it to the pulpit today intentionally. And it's almost hilarious that I did it. Can you imagine life without a cell phone now? We've gotten, we've gotten so, when cell phones first came out, I thought, you know, the wealthy can have them, but that's not, the, most people are not going to get them. But nowadays, you don't have hardly any reason for it because they set up booths across the street giving them out free. I don't know how that works because I, I thought there wasn't any free cheese. Anyway. You know, you're reading a book and the, the heroine gets in trouble she, she gets in one of those binds and you're screaming at her in the book, just call somebody, get your phone out of your purse and call them. And then you realize the book was written in 1970 and they didn't have any cell phones. <laughs> you know, you gotta, you gotta put it back in, in the days that they didn't. You know, one of the most marvelous things on these cell phones is that there is a little button here on the side where you can flick it and turn that thing off. And I'm so thankful we're in the day now that most of you do did that. We don't have too many get calls right in the middle of church. But, but you know, even when you turn the ringer off, voicemail and text messages can still get through. Text messages are wonderful things, folks. Wonderful things, because you don't have to go through the whole polite conversation stuff. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Oh, really? No. Did, well, did it hurt much? How's the weather where you're at? The family doing okay? Tell them, tell them I said hi. I don't know why we do that. We ne never do. Please don't tell me to tell my wife something. I don't. With the text message, you can get right to the point. I mean, you can get right down there to it because I use them all the time. I use them for business. I use them for the church's work. I use them for friendship. I use them to send things to them and, uh, you know, spread some affection and some affirmation. I like to do that with those kind of things. You just, just spread a little love around. You can do it real easy, just real quick, and you don't have to spend a whole lot of time. You don't have to get mushy. Somebody help me out now. But somewhere down the line, some idiot found out that they can use them for sales calls. And it just, it just, they're, they're legitimate. It's, it's legal, I guess, but it sure is annoying. And I know there's a number you can put in there, the do not call number, but they have found ways around that, my friend. I do not want a longer car warranty. Can I get an amen out of somebody? I am not.
interested in a va free vacation somewhere so that you can rope me in to sell me a condo someplace. I'm not interested in it. Leave me alone. But when I took the church's number and put it on my cell phone so that there would always be somebody answering the church's cell phone number, I cannot tell you how many spam calls and spam texts I get. Whoever Lewis was, I wish he had never had this number. <laughs> Telling you, I'm tired. I'm tired of getting his number. Uh, I just, I wish, they have tried to sell me CBD oil. Does anybody know what that is? That's extract of marijuana. That's what that is. I like orange extract, not marijuana extract. I am not interested. I'm not going to smoke it, toke it, drink it, or anything else. No, thank you. They've tried to connect me to sexy girls online as if that would help me nowadays. There are packages that they're holding for me. I just need to respond. Gift cards that they're waiting for me to claim. And the last thing that has been happening in the last few weeks, and I don't know where they thought this one up, but the most harassing thing that has happened on my cell phone is to get into a group text message. There's le legitimate reasons for group text, but when it's nothing but them trying to do this kind of junk and they're sending it out to 20 or 30 people and they put down there, all you got to do is type stop and it'll all go away. Do you know what happens if you type stop to a group message like that? You have just told them that you have a legitimate phone number that they can harass you further with. That's all they've done. So if you're believing that kind of stuff, I'm sorry. I never bring my phone to the pulpit. Well, I did that other time. If I had not turned off that ringer this morning, here's what came 23 minutes ago while I was preaching. Oh my, just shut up. I don't know, that might be legitimate. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't see any of you texting me. That one comes from Ohio, by the way. And here's one that is at Stacy, something or another, hotmail.com, and it's in German looking alphabet, and it's something about meet me at work or something like that. Here's one I can, cannot even say across the pulpit. Here's another one that says, what? So since I have been preaching, six text messages have come through. And all I got to say is, what kind of fool do you think I am? Now, obviously, somebody is pretty, I mean, all that, stop. Let me out of this. I'm going to tell the, the, the IRS on you. I'm going to tell this. I'm going to tell that. All you've done was put a nibble on the hook that they put out there. And they know that what they're fishing for is working. Are you with me? There's some days, matter of fact, a lot of days, I get more junk mail and I get more junk text than I do legitimate, honest things. Because we are living in a time when they're going to use everything they can to get a hold of you. Dear elderly people, please, please do not fall for scams. 
Don't give your bank information out. Don't give personal information out. Never give your social security out. Don't, don't go to that. Don't, don't even give your address, your phone number, or anything else out. If you have any questions about it, call somebody that's tech savvy. You know, somebody like 22, 23 years old, like Sam or somebody. Talk, call somebody that's in touch with that kind of stuff because there is an, a bombardment on this world that is going on for your mind. Just as much as Olis, uh, 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 oh, oh, what was his name that sailed the world? Uh, started with an O. The Greek guy. And the, and the sirens begin to call for him. He lashed himself to the mask so that he wouldn't and listen to the sirens or couldn't respond to it. I'm telling some of you, you need to leash yourself to the tree of Calvary so that you don't respond to some of the junk that this world is throwing out there at you. Yes, some is legitimate, but there's a lot of it that is spam. There's some of it that doesn't mean anything. You know what spam is? Besides the fake meat. Such spam is something posting as mail. Stupid, pointless, annoying message. <laughs> Don't even respond to it. Don't open it. Don't get into it. Don't let it bother you. Just destroy it, delete it, and get rid of it. Is there anybody in here that is struggling with credit card debt? Let me tell you what to do with that, those things that come in the mail. You pick them up. This is cloth. I can't do it. You pick them up and you rip them in half. You put them in the shredder. Don't even open the junk. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? I'm, letting, I'm talking about some practical things, but I'm also talking about your spirit and your soul. I, I'm, I'm letting you know some facts of life when it comes to your normal life, but I'm more important than that. I'm trying to talk about the voices that are calling to you, saying you don't have to live that way. You don't have to do that with that stuff. All of that's not that important. I'm telling you holiness is important. I'm telling you this apostolic message is worth fighting for. Stop listening to those voices. Quit listening to things that are trying to pull at you. Sometimes, sometimes we need to go back and listen to the words of the former prophets like I preached about the other day. Go back to the old time ways and remember what brought us to where we're at in the first place. Well, we don't want to live in the 50s. I don't care if your clothes is a little updated as long as they still meet the same modesty, holiness standards that they met in the 50s. Modesty and holiness concepts do not change. Someone said, are you, a, are you a Protestant church? No, I'm not Protestant. You're not? You're Catholic? No, I'm not Catholic. What are you? I'm a Reformationist. I'm taking the church back to what it was in the beginning because that's what I've got to line up to was what was given in the word of God. I want to make sure we have an Acts 238 message. I want to have the same doctrine, the same passion, the same dedication that that first generation had. Somebody help me preach in this house. What are you going to do? I'm going to listen to the right voices. I'm going to get a hold of apostolic preaching that is preaching the apostolic truth. That's what I'm going to listen to. Hear me, somebody. You need to turn off the TV and start listening to the things of God. Brother Bodie, we don't have a TV. Thank you. I'm glad about it. But you need to watch what you do on Facebook. You need to get rid of the junk that is pulling at your spirit. One of the most talented young men I ever pastored. Talented, talented, talented. 
sing, the Spirit of the Lord would fall. But I had to warn him one day. I had to warn him because at work with a bunch of other carnal, not church men, he was listening to a lot of country and western music. You, you against southern gospel? No, not southern gospel. I'm against stuff that talks about tears in your beers. Your wife leaving you, you leaving your wife, running around with other women. I don't even listen to rap music. All I hear is what when I'm pulled up at the stoplight. And just that much makes me want to scream at them, okay? I'm going to trust that you're not dumb enough to listen to that stuff. You're not dumb enough. Did I say that? I think I'll say it again. I'll trust you're not dumb enough to listen to that junk because it's filthy. But I'm going to tell you, if you've been listening to stuff that does not feed the spiritual man inside of you, you're building up the wrong things in you, snuffing out the voice of God. Because the voice of God's not going to compete with all that junk. Not going to do it. You go falling for that spam text. Moment of temptation. You respond to that invite. Come on, somebody. You're not praying like you should. You start following things. And it doesn't have to be something on your phone. It can be stuff in your spirit and your attitude. Where life has been putting so much pressure on you. That rather than learning to rest in the Lord and let God take care of it, you start lashing out to people. Start walking in the flesh instead of in the spirit. Building up walls instead of bridges. You got mail, it's pulling for your attention. But most of it's junk mail. And some of you today need to clean out your mailbox. I hate having to go through them one by one, clean them off. I like it when I can just check that box up at the top and get rid of the whole bunch of them. Anything good, leave it alone, but the rest of them, I'm so thankful for the altar because at the altar, I don't have to say, you know, last week at four o'clock I did this and, and I did this and I did that. I'm not here to make you do rosemaries, not rosemary, rosaries. Hail Marys, one for every sin, kneel down on hard rocks the whole time. I'm glad God doesn't operate like that. I'm glad that he's so merciful with the right spirit and the right heart. All you've got to do is hit an altar and say, God, I need mercy. I need your, I need your help. I'm sorry I've blown it. I messed up. And that's what the blood's for. Little children, John said, I would that you did not sin, but if you do, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, that if we will confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This altar's open. I prefer if you put on your mask to come. But this altar's open. Some of you desperately need it. 
some of you that if it's too crowded up here find a seat kneel down at that place and you just need to spend some time talking to God come on you need to stand because without standing you don't respond come on come on you need to respond to the Holy Ghost Spirit of the Lord is talking God is talking dealing with some things no one else knows what you've been listening to no one else knows what you responded to but God does 